Hello, Massimo. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? It's... I'm really great. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to start, and I'm, I'm eager. I can't wait. <laughs> so it's a, it's a real pleasure to have you on the show. It's the first time we we record a, our discussion, but it's uh, yeah. at least the second time we discuss um, through a video call. Um, and um, I ask you to bring us a, a, a subject. So first, I will ask you to maybe to present yourself so that the audience uh, know a bit more about you. Yeah. And then we maybe just uh, introduce your, 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 your topic. Okay. So I am Massimo Curatella, Max, if you want. I live in Rome. And um, I am a designer of systems, whatever it means, we will talk about it. Yeah. I'm specialized in uh, service design, UX design, and in, uh, interaction design. Although I'm basically having experience in doing uh, the entire workflow. Almost 25 years ago, I was a, a software engineer. Mm -hmm. So I used to do the programmer. Then I went to, you know, the other side of the force. <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, definitely eclectic and, uh, you know, I like to do many different things. So I have also experience in facilitating, in writing, in being a technical journalist and been teaching in different universities. And um, it was nice to meet you online because I found that we have a lot of things in common. And this is uh, why we started to talk about things that we love. Mm -hmm. And um, thanks to the initial meeting that we had, I had a lot of uh, inspiration and prompts. I've been thinking a lot about the things we said. And uh, I decided to, you know, give a little bit of a, of a challenge for ourselves, especially to me. <laughs> I pick an impossible topic. It's something absolutely out of uh, uh, the earth. And so, uh, by definition, complexity cannot be simple, cannot be easy. Yes. And so my question is, uh, how can you make complexity, you know, manageable, understandable, especially if you not not only want to understand it and manage it, if it is possible or if it is if it makes sense, but mm -hmm. if you want to collaborate with others, maybe you want to address issues that are in the realm of complexity. So it's a huge topic. It's uh, absolutely surreal for mm -hmm. me to face it in 60 minutes. <laughs> But I think it's really uh, productive and inspiring to talk about it, especially with a person like you, because I really appreciate your blog and the things you, you publish and the links you share. It's really informative and stimulating. So that's the right place to be. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I first want to say that uh, it's uh, totally uh, likewise. I, I love what you are writing. I love what you are sharing in general so uh, I think it is the well this is the reason we are discussing together right it's like <laughs> yeah. as you said uh, yes it's a big it's a big it's a really big topic um, I I see you know I see what is usually one of the most difficult thing in in education I think in general and education related to design specifically because we you know um, I read somewhere I don't remember where exactly but like the designers as as are, are like philosophers with hands mm -hmm. like people who can act not yes. just think well although I, I think it's not fair for, for philosophers because nowadays they are more into you know as well doing things but but mm -hmm. but that's another topic uh, and 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 you know it's like How do you learn things that are, you know, um, actionable? Yeah. But at the same time, that are still, you know, um, food for for thoughts. Like you, you, yeah. you, you, you need to. It 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 requires you to to think a lot about it before you you you're going to actions. But at the same time, you you have a huge you have a you have a huge to act. On your knowledge, so it's like um, you know this kind of dichotomy between thinking and doing. Like people love to say, "Don't think, just just do." Mm -hmm. um, I see we we are touching this kind of grounds. 
Um, I don't know where to start. Maybe. <clears throat> well, you touch a lot of uh, good starting points <laughs> when you talk about learning, designing, or being yeah. a philosopher with hands. Um, I was thinking to another metaphor that is, uh, you know, a good designer is also a leader mm -hmm. because um, if you think well and if you build uh, the right path for, for other people to understand well the context, you are leading, you are showing the way. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you think about the designer in the ivory tower, you know, imposing the hands, this yeah. is what you need to do. And I don't think it's what I'm referring to. Rather, I would say um, a designer as a leader is a system leader because uh, they are able mm -hmm. to understand the context, what they are moving together with the stakeholders, the client, the end users, uh, the colleagues, and uh, they are co-designing possible solutions. They are, they are making sense together mm -hmm. with the environment. And um, I, got, I gather a very interesting um, a quote from uh, a book uh, that was talking about, um, you know, how you write a novel that is the same as uh, how you do editing. And they were saying, uh, you know, it's like driving at night. Uh, you know the road, but you cannot see far away to the horizon, but you have your, you know, car lights you can do a travel you can do a trip like that yeah. so designing when you are in a complex settings that it which is basically always it's almost like that you have to have you know the master skill of being able to drive you need to be careful mm -hmm. you need to stay awake to be in good health but you, are, you you also have to look around you as things are happening and this is really a good metaphor for for design or for uh, mm -hmm. understanding complex topics because of course it is important for you to have a background to be qualified to do your research mm -hmm. but most of the times it's difficult to make sense out of something and to produce a synthesis which is you know brief elegant and smart and smooth sure. so you need to go you know at sight let's see what happens mm -hmm. this is i think it's the philosophy if you want to, to introduce the the concept of design thinking iteration or design screens to me, it's not so formal and so well structured. It's it's almost an attitude. It's a way of being. Mm -hmm. So, according to what I can discover together with you, and we can learn together of the problem we are studying. We need to sometimes to make decisions which are sharp and well defined. Some other times, you need to, you know, put in place some experiments to see what happens if we do this or that. And that is really the the, the craft and the skill of a designer. Because there, you need to have, uh, you know, the skill, the capability of being fast and quickly prototyping, in, in really being a master of tools. That is the place in which I keep on experimenting with, you know, digital canvases like Miro, Miro, yeah. Figma. To me, it doesn't make any difference if it is uh, post-its on the wall or if it is pen and paper. I just need to be fast and effective. So sometimes I share my screen and with the clients, I show my, you know, my wall. Some other times I show a Google drawing, even if it is old and clunky. Yes. Uh, nowadays I've discovered another tool which is called Whimsical. It's, you know, it's, it seems to be oh, almost a toy, but it is so limited in the things that you can do that you are forced to be tidy and clear because you have only some boxes to move on the screen. And, um, so simple tools and simple rules to make sense out of complexity. Mm -hmm. The great effort is to be alert, to stop and reflect. What are we seeing? What did we discover together? Yeah. Sometimes this is missing completely because you don't have time. You you have to go fast. You, you need to deliver. You don't have time to do retrospectives or you know evaluate the quality of your thinking. <laughs> to deliver and fast because you know. We need it, Max. Thank you, but yeah, this is really interesting. But we need it. Can you? Yeah, we want to do this process, but can you? Can you do it tonight? Can you do it tomorrow morning? <laughs> so it's always this. This is the kind of creative pressure now that, that always the, the fight because you want to be rational, 
systemic, systematic, but then you have to deal with reality. You just have to do it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, of things here. Uh, I, I write down some, you know, uh, keywords uh, I hear from you. Um, and I like, well, it does a, a lot of things, but first on the simplification of complexity, not in the sense of uh, like, uh, make it more, you know, simple, stupid, but more in the way that you, you can create a, a, a concept that is easy to to grasp, to understand, which is a, a good way to introduce something more complex and, and let people maybe go deeper, but it's enough to act upon it. And um, you use the m metaphors to do it, like, you know, with the the, the spotlights of, of your car or yeah. uh, stuff like that, which are great explanation of, great enough explanation and, and useful explanations of something like it's a, you know, this is like in science when we say, okay, we know that all models are wrong. Yeah. And accurate representation of reality. Well, some of them a, good, a good model in science is one that helps you to predict some stuff. And if it does well this work, that's enough. We don't need more until we reach the end of, you know, the usefulness of, uh, of this model. And, and this is exactly like that. So how do, can we create, create uh, metaphors, models that are n simple enough to explain something, but that are also useful enough to be actionable. And yeah. I like, you know, we, we use a lot of visual stuff, visual models to explain complexity, like the iceberg model. Yes. Which is a, a really, really great one because it's visually, you understand that there's something on the top and under underwater you have a lot more and you can explain a lot of things with, with this kind of, uh, of models. Um, <clears throat> this yours, it was, uh, really good. Uh, I, I have someone, I have one that is, uh, that is similar, uh, which is the, because I, I played some games, uh, -huh. uh in the past and uh, I love one, which is a uh, civilization, which is a strategy PM. And I have the fact that you, you don't see the, the map. It's like it's foggy everywhere. There's a fog, and and the only way to discover the map is to make you know some of your pawns uh, move on the map. Yes, and you see always, even though you you know you discover all the map, you see some key elements that are static, but everything which is dynamic is hid uh, hidden from your view. Yes, you need to have a pawn which is close to. Uh, something that is moving to see it and yeah. you know it's this is this is a great represent, representation of how far you can see yes. it's like it's limited to the the field of view of a poem and and that's it and as a a god like creator in this in this game you you can see all, all the viewpoints of all your pawns uh which is uh, already more than what you can do in <laughs> in reality but I, I think it's a great uh way of of saying when you want to map uh if you are alone it will take you a lot more time you know you can draw some parallels here with uh you know you need to go in a, in a co-design cool way because there's a lot more point of views uh you can map until so far that you can you are able to see so more the more you have view point of views the more you can map because the more you can view and stuff like that so uh, maybe mine is a bit more less effective than yours, but uh, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it, makes, it makes sense. I like it, and I I've been playing the same game. Mm -hmm. um, it makes me think about another concept mm -hmm. that is: uh, you need not only to have the capability of looking around you in a dynamic and adaptive way, according to what happens. But you need to create a network of sensors. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to have a network of probes that would send you back signals. So your capability of looking, you know, farther away, uh, both in space and in time, it's uh, it's a superpower if you want to talk in, in the American way. Mm -hmm. 
because you can see longer than others and that's that puts you in the position of uh, having more opinions maybe m most you know more of them are right compared to who has only one opinion or, or their strong intuition uh, this is something related to my uh, practice of uh, of design because i i usually struggle and fight with clients when they say you know we have this uh, inventory of ui pages of 150 pieces can, can you do that what's your estimate and I used to say, yeah, you know, I can hire a couple of people. We can do it in, you know, one week, two weeks, three weeks. And I used to say, I just used to do it. Then after months, I discovered that that software didn't make sense at all. Because <laughs> it was maybe beautiful. And, you know, and the first impression is, wow, this is a cool UI. What a cool graphics, cool, cool icons. But then you, you do your click through, and you discover that there are you know steps missing and things that you cannot understand or, or pieces flying away so i stopped completely having this kind of linear and restricted view on design and so i started to do something that is related to what we're talking about i started to say i need to have the broadest and deepest view of what you want to do either if you allow me to do that or not because otherwise i'm not able to do a good job for you and I, I'm not interested in just earning the money for the sake of selling pixels, you know, by the way, by the kilos. I did that. I don't want to do that anymore. And so it started a process of actually changing the culture of the client. So I started to educate them. This is how you're supposed to design a software. There are those steps. You need to research users. You need to empathize. Whatever it means, that is not meaning patting on the back. <laughs> you need to extract a synthesis of your research. You need to make sense out of it. And you need to design according to an iterative model when you refine a prototype until it is uh, almost perfectly fitting the, the real needs and desire of the users. That is basically the UX mantra. No? Mm -hmm. When you need to explain it to them, that is the first problem with complexity. It takes time. So you need to, to show use cases. And then you need to sell it because you have been selling so far, you know, 100 UI pages. Oh, great. Now tell them, well, I don't want to do that. I cannot do that. I need mean, first mm -hmm. to talk to your users. Wow, you, you want to talk to my users? You cannot. Well, I cannot work for you. So you need to go to the struggle of explaining why yeah. it's important to co-design, co-create. And that's an, it's a change of, you know, mindset. And so by, uh, uh, piece by piece, by either reading this kind of approach and explaining, uh, so not just doing it, you know, and saying that's your research, those are your personas, this is the wild flow. But you you stop and you present and you say this is why I did that. The button is there for these reasons because this this background. This takes time. It's a lot of effort, it, and it changed completely my role as a designer. That's why. I like to think that I'm more on the strategic design side rather than saying, yeah, I do UI, I do interaction, mm -hmm. that I almost have no interest in. This is difficult. It's really more rewarding, but it, it also brings you to, to be more selective and demanding for clients. You cannot yes. work with any kind of client. They need to have this kind of uh, fertile ground. I, I totally agree with you. There's, um, a, yes. Um, yes, educating clients, people that are not used to work in a certain way, to make them work with you, which is maybe the other way. It's, it's the, the other point in the, the role of designers that we, if only we were doing our work on our side and we could, you know, be alone and do our stuff and come back and say, ta da, that's all done. You know, there's people that do, that are doing a design this way, but we know where it goes after that. People yeah. struggle to implement it. People struggle to see the meaning, stuff like that. So we we, we need them with us during the research. We need them with us during the ideation, and and probably we need them with us when we start materializing those ideas into 
whatever screens, other you know diagrams, yeah. whatever artifacts. So that they see the connection between the, st yes. the, the steps uh, you are you are going through, and 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 to get them here, just to to embark them into this you know endeavor, you have to convince them, as you said, and and this means you 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 need to 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 influence their context, hmm. to you know you, you want to change behaviors. That, that's basically what. Even though, even before changing their mindset, because you cannot change the mindset if they didn't experience anything. Well, or it's at least it's really hard to do it. You you, you want them to to be part of it because the experience leads them to you know to learning with you during the during the, the steps, and and it's easier to to make them change the the, the point of view on something if you if they experience it in some ways. So, so it's it's about changing behaviors, and then, you know, see the opportunity when they are ready to change be to change behaviors, and then this is the point where you can bring them to change the point of view on something. Well, I guess something like that. It's a, it's, it's my no, no. idea. I agree. And, and, and 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 this is this is where we we also we we need to incentivize them on on, on some on. on on this and and changing their context when we are external to their context i think it's the the point where it's really hard to and this is why you need to be selective in a sense you need people that are already you know where there's already some thought process around their way of doing where there's something that you you feel in a way you feel that they are ready to to go into those uh this process with you. I'm, yeah. I'm really guessing you, on your side, of no, course. No, yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. That's exactly what I was saying. Um, sometimes I tend to be naive in thinking that uh, I want to get the most out of my time because, you know, I want to have a purpose and a meaning. I want to have an impact. So I want to change people's life, whatever it is, even if it is a small thing. Uh, so I tend to think that everybody else in the world is like me. This is sometimes it's a, you know, a <laughs> desired delusion. Mm -hmm. But of course, I'm not so naive to, to think that it's the, the reality. So some other times, the entrepreneur or the client, they just want to make money. That's nothing wrong with it. And they want to have success. Nothing wrong with that. So you need, you need to be a strategic communicator. And you need to persuade them. The point, mm -hmm. that's a specific word that sometimes has a, has a negative connotation. Yeah, I don't want to convince you about anything. I don't want to change your mind or influence you. I want to show you a workflow, a method that is going to be more efficient and effective and pleasurable and sustainable than what you are doing right now. That's my point. This is my confidence. So... I need to gain your trust in bringing you to the table to discuss it because I want to show you how to do things so that we're going to do things together better than you were doing. Mm -hmm. This is my point. So I don't want to convince you because, you know, I am better than you and I want to save the world and you're not. Maybe you don't care and we don't have to talk about this. This is not the point. The point is you're ambitious. You, you, you have a complex project that might have a strong impact. Well, Let's do things in the proper way. Let me show you what could be a proper way. That is not my way. It's going to be our way. I cannot do it alone. You cannot ask to me to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. That's the change of mind. So you're right when you say I need to, to change behaviors. And this is difficult because it's actual change in the, in the widest change of, uh, sense of the world. When you mm -hmm. need to change an organization, change a behavior, change a habit. So that is the key place where a designer becomes an agent of change. Mm -hmm. At the smallest level, the smallest scale within, you know, you, yourself, your family, your organization, and then the community or the ecosystem where you are designing a product and a service. And that is really hard, but it's really exciting because you cannot just say, okay, tell me what I have to do. I will get back tomorrow and I will give it to you. 
you need to explain why we are doing certain things. And you need to facilitate the process because we are going to do it together. Because I don't have the solutions. I don't have even the right path to go through. We need to build our little collective intelligence, collective mind, and we need to be aligned and effective in being, you know, uh, fast and quick and precise about learning in the, in the fastest and in the best way possible, but also to make sense out of what we are learning, because what is our purpose? Do we need to know everything or do we need to focus on certain things? Mm-hmm. And this is exactly the, the, the sense of uh, uh, exploring complexity, sense making together, but also design research and design synthesis, because it's not enough to say, okay, these are the sources where to look for information. These are the experiments. Then you have to make sense out of it. Are you able to explain it in a concise way, but also showing the value of it towards yeah. the purpose that we are having as an organization, not because, you know, any uh, uh, arbitrary point of view. And there you need to be a good communicator, a good thinker, a good systems thinker. That That's the words that I like. You need to be good at finding the biases that you might be victim of, the mental traps. And this is really hard because you're a human being. Yeah, full of traps. <laughs> that's the point. And so... <laughs> If you have the ambition of doing all of that alone, good luck with that. It's impossible. You need to to grow your organization, whatever it is, internal, external, the ecosystem, your clients, your colleagues. You need to grow your network of thinkers because otherwise, this is the metaphor we were doing 30 minutes ago. How can you grow your systems of probes, mm-hmm. of sensors? Because if you find something interesting, I don't want to keep it with you in your inbox. I want you to share in a meaningful way with me so we can make sense of what's happening. But you need to be educated about it. It's not Facebook. So you need to do it in a certain way. You need to curate your thoughts, your sharing. You need to make a synthesis. You need to put things in context. You need to make a connected report about what's useful to us. And this needs to be curated, maintained, and kept alive like a garden. That's the other beautiful metaphor of, Mm -hmm. you know, curating a product, a service, or a knowledge base as a garden. You are there, you know, to nurture like plants every day. You cut, you know, a little dry drench here and there. (laughs) You put things around. You you, you take care of of the sunlight, of the water. And that's the the most beautiful metaphor, uh, you know, closer to be a systems leader rather than just a maker or a designer. Mm-hmm. And uh, it entails a lot of things because you need to be less about yourself, your ego. It's less about me. It's more about what can we do together. It's we. Mm-hmm. But this is really sincere. I need to be open, available to listen to you. I need to be also, you know, graceful and tolerant for your faults, your limitations. Otherwise, how can we work together? So it's not just a matter, are you qualified or not, but can we learn this together? Can we grow together? And this is a, a different, you know, way of thinking about uh, a company, an organization in which you have your cubicle, you have your, your role, you have your, your things to do, you do it with your heads down and when it's you know five in the in the afternoon you, you can't wait to, to to go home that's hell to me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah well well you know it reminds me of our first discussion when i introduced you the the space for action barrier yes you know what because what you're saying it's like it makes sense to me it's like i i know what we are talking about and i i know how well all the opportunities and advantages of seeing the the leadership like this and seeing how we could organize stuff like this but then you 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 are you hit the wall of the barrier of a company which is organized organized in a you know really really structured way where um, the constraints are here to force you to go in 
into the you know the 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 the, the walls they, they they created between stuff because this is the way they, they make it manageable and and you 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 want to to move stuff you want to to do di things differently basically this is what you are saying it's like you, you arrive and you want to co-create and it, this is in most organizations just like this step of making things together it's already a huge step for most of them and and I feel like this is the the human re response of the of the of the organization yeah. against those kind of change, and uh, it can go you know bottom up in the sense where you can introduce your way of doings in you know small actions at small level and it can grow, but and unless there is a real you know. Uh, will to change stuff and change to change um, how the organization allows, you know, be more loose on some rules. I, I don't see it um, like you, 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 most organizations like have a space for a safe space for learning until so far, until some, you know, you, you, you are not able to do it always as you want it to, yeah. to, to do. And this this limits necessarily. I'm I'm losing your audio. Yeah. Yeah, I'm losing my connection. Sorry. Why? Try to touch the wire. Uh, yeah, better. Yes, it's better. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so this space for actions will determine what you will be able to do necessarily, and where you will would be to able to go and so what you will be this able to discover and and you know and then this uh, this is hard to solve because it's like it's circular you you, you don't know where, really where to start it you say okay we have to remove the space for barrier uh, the space for action barrier but to do it you need first to change stuff and changing stuff means you know hitting against this uh, this barrier so it's like circular you don't know where to start and it's a wicked problem it's a <laughs> an issue and 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 it's like uh it's like really hard to 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 get through and 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 sometimes you have to accept you cannot change it and uh and 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 the fact that you accept that you maybe play by the rules at some point then you see an opportunity to you know to inject something new in it and this may help change stuff but it's slow and it's uh you know you have to it's a it's not always the, the easy way <laughs> um i can really relate to what you're saying um i have some i have diverse experiences in trying to change workflows processes or even organizations cultures for very small or very big organizations and um, I failed most of the times, but I've learned a lot of things. Um, when you were talking about the fact that it, it's hard and sometimes if you are, you know, an employee, mm -hmm. you can explore and find the, the space for action up to a certain point. It's true. Um, that's why I am usually an external consultant. I'm a <laughs> freelancer. I used to be a freelancer. So you have way more space for actions because you know if things are, are, are like they are i mean I, I i don't have to die in this organization mm -hmm. I, just a client but sometimes i really want to have uh, an impact i want to have success or maybe i have a long contract so i need to do something mm -hmm. and the concept of some properties of complexities came emerged and it became useful and i want to tell you how for instance you know, when you talk about organizational design and development, the first thing that it's important for you is to understand what is the uh, official organization, you know, a breakdown chart. This is the CEO, this is the CDO, this is the manager, mm -hmm. the first line of, and you have the departments. And uh, then you need to understand what is, what is the real social network. Because the real managers or the real people doing key things maybe are not overlapping with the real roles. Now, to do that, you are almost, you know, on stealth. 
because you are doing maybe interviews and you have access to that sort of uh, synoptic view of the organization like nobody else in any other place is having mm -hmm. so you have another that's another way uh, that's the second time i'm saying that you have a the superpower of seeing things <laughs> like they are not seeing it this is true for complex processes that are you know going cross departments so you have silos they know the first part of the thing they mm -hmm. don't know the second part of the thing and so on but in, the, in, a, in a project for uh, the European Commission, we made a, a, a six meters by two chart on the wall for 30 engineers uh, after three, six, four months of research. And we said, look, this is your, pro your process. You are here, you are there, you are there. And the, 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 you know, the leader said, well, I, I, I never seen the process <laughs> like this. I didn't know we were doing this. Mm -hmm. This is the first thing that you have as a uh, organization designer or what agile coach. I don't know what's the name of it, but this is the first superpower that you, superpower that you have, and uh, this is the, the place in which you have to face complexity with complexity, because mm -hmm. as you were saying, it's difficult to go person by person and say, look, it would be better if you could do this, this, and that, or if you have it to go down from the top you know the leader is imposing right now that you have to do this and that. it's going to be failing it's a failure so what i've been experiencing was experiences was to create a network from the ground up of the same people in the same role but, but with a new motivation of uh, getting connected with the company so by having the buy-in from the leadership starting you know internal projects they needed following my suggestions to establish a link with the other departments so mm -hmm. basically you would have not just you know one top line manager working in a single direction but you know networks starting to mesh together so you would have a real internal network of forces trying to interacting and there, when you when you set up something like this and you are on the starting line, you can feel the power of something which is much more complex than you saying, well, you should do this, you should do that. <laughs> That's people working with you trying to reach a common goal. This is the real power. Of course, if one day they say, well, you know, Max, thank you, but we sold the company. We don't need you anymore. It's done. It's the end of it. So what is the... How can you how can we leave how can we leverage this concept in a more sustainable way by building companies like this instead of having you know the old year hierarchies mm -hmm. with the kings and the queens and the slaves because that's what it is <laughs> but you have maybe more modern way of putting people together and you give to the individual the responsibility of uh, following a purpose which, which has a meaning to them so they don't have to be motivated by incentive with my money they are doing that because they want to do it they need to do it this is my dream this is what i try to do i failed a lot of times but i keep on trying and i think this is if you have a company like this you are unstoppable no, no, nobody can stop you because the, the mother is not just you know the money but we we are here because we have a vision we have our north star our a closed star and we yeah. we're doing that because we want to win together another dream maybe another delusion let's see <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i think it's this kind of organization is hard to 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 create because the because first i, I think it's kind of the if it's done it's it's always the kind of exception to yeah. most and, exactly. and this is this this only fact is enough to make it hard to to make uh <laughs> that's also the reason why we're here tonight yes <laughs> to make it not only just an exception but maybe that's the true. normality the new normality this is the new <laughs> normality that i like <laughs> new normal this is what it is the new normal to me yes and and, and then i think this if you reach the point where you, you 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 make this kind of organization then you have to deal with the fact that people are not used to 
did yeah. and so you know it creates a lot of uncertainty for yeah. them they, they they don't know exactly because you know th this is the problem with our standard organization it's like there's a certainty of the rules yes and so it creates the illusion of certainty of you know whatever the goals the successes whatever but if you remove this layer of rules that even even if we agree with the fact that everything else is pure illusion yes right so there's no certainty anyway but we created a, a, a sense of certainty if you remove this layer then people see reality like uncertainty complexity as you said you have to deal with this and it's and for most people it's you know it's it's uh the the, the fear managing people that feel uncertain uncertainty because then you you you, you, you this is the part of leadership which is challenging i think it's a uh, it's you 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 don't have anything to to control them you you cannot you cannot control them through the rules and and you know yes. you, you you have to to find other ways to do it and and co-creation and but but participatory participatory uh organization stuff like that is it makes sense but but then then people will say okay we, but we cannot do everything this way and you know and the the kind of rules you have to put in place to that are simple but uh, you know uh needs to change anyway um uh, th this is those concepts are hard to you know you, you have all the uncertainty behind so it's hard to, to for people to, to to feel comfortable with it and then it, when you put people on our process in general the, 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 this is like this as well you say we will do some research and we will find insights and from those insights we will draw you know the next actions even though we have some kind of phases and we, we we know the kind of stuff we will do in the future we are not certain of what will be the outcome of each of these phases and we cannot say okay in two months we will do this and this is will be exactly lead to this kind of output and this will exactly lead to this kind of successes and people not don't feel comfortable with this kind of answers because they they la they love the illusion of certainty in some way you know because we we because well everyone is selling uh, uh, some kind of certainty at some point you know have you ever watched the movie matrix yes <laughs> of course well, well, <laughs> i love it welcome to the real world then. <laughs> yeah um yes that's a, a, a the, that's this a great point about control no, and, and a summary of all of it so we, everything you says it's uh, absolutely the truth it's absolutely correct oh. it, it depends if uh, um you there i'm losing you yeah yes yes there's a um, they were um, like uh, you were frozen for, for okay. a second but uh, this thing is fine very good so <laughs> i was saying uh, that the point made by by matrix it, it's absolutely this mm -hmm. uh, of course it's a movie science fiction man but uh, think about uh, the certainty of being an employee before you know february 2020 and then the <laughs> where is your certainty where is your certainty yeah and that's true how can you say that uh, since uh, they are the ceo they know what is going to happen in two months i don't believe in astrology why should i believe in your predictions so i know that is really comfortable to live with certainties and of course people tend to live with this kind of luxury but can we afford it this is my point can we afford it to me it's it's something that needs to be absolutely challenged mm -hmm. and, uh, the other the other concept is the concept of control why are you supposed to control me why but then that okay so so i i would add something on that because i, I totally agree and I, I think all systems that we have around that have rules to control are not meant to control people they are meant to control outcomes but 
as we are living through these systems with through these rules one of the mean by managing the outcomes is managing as well everything that leads to those outcomes so if we want to make sure this big you know <laughs> that we have a certain outcome we need in a way if we follow logically the the, the philosophy of this kind of ethics we 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 need to control every steps of the process that leads to outcome x or y but and that means people as well even okay. though it's not the, the first point this is yeah. terrorism this is the scientific management this seems to be something from yeah. the past although it's something that everybody can yeah. want to use today i totally agree it's so totally the agree. point is if you cannot know your future in mind why are you supposed to set my future for me mm -hmm. and that if you want to get some outcomes why don't we build together a plan rather than you controlling the steps? Doesn't make sense for you to do because you know when you had to create some simple objects in a factory 100 years ago, of course you need to control the steps. Otherwise, you could get hurt and you wouldn't have the throughput. But what about creating a software today? Can you control the steps? Are you building <laughs> software? Can you control the steps of building a software? Are you able to predict what's going to happen every step of the way? because this is what I'm doing day and night and nothing is controllable. We are really driving in the night, in a foggy night, mm -hmm. while the car is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> this is today. And think about, you know, government, policy making, healthcare. Yeah. How do you wear your mask? Like this, like this, like this? <laughs> Should it be a one meter or two? I mean, that, that everywhere is like this. How yes. do you educate your children? Is it easy? You just say, okay, I want to do this so the first year, this the second year. Try, good luck with that. Yeah, that, <laughs> I, that's a good that's a good one. Uh, how do you raise your kids? You, you know, it's like, a, when uh, I love, I, I love just one point on this, like when we are saying, well, the first point is that they should not lie, right? Yeah. Because and it's bad to lie, lie. Until, <laughs> until you reach reality and you are like, you are lying every every time, you know, in sense. <laughs> and like your, your kids like I, 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 you, you. You tell me that it's not it's not good to, to lie, but you <laughs> I, I want to tell you some fun story. Not, not not very you know decent, but you know, so good <laughs> friends. We are only good friends. So I used to put a lot of efforts and in investing a lot in, to into to my child. Mm. And I keep on talking to him about the uh, things of the world and everything, the technology, why Elon Musk wants to go to Mars, what about reusing uh, rockets, and uh, he basically absorbed everything and now he's giving back. So one day I was getting out of the bathroom and I kept with me a lot of books and on top of this pile of books there was my mobile phone. And the, the last book was a book about philosophy, you know, critical thinking. And basically, I didn't manage to keep the pile of books and everything fall, fall down, fell down together with my mobile phone. So he, he, he looked at me and he said, Hey, Dad, look at the cover of that book. What does it say? Logic. Hmm. Do you see logic what you did? <laughs> Do you see any logic in what you did? It was seven. It was seven. <laughs> so I said, OK, it works. The human mind can learn to reason. I'm just, you know, making a joke, but I can tell you 400 other things that I wrote down. And he started to say, I talked to him about this podcast mm -hmm. days ago. I said, look, I have a friend, it's Kevin, I need to talk to him. And, uh, you know, I basically uh, put myself in a difficult situation because I said, I want to talk about how to explain simply uh, difficult things. What can I do? What should I do? Tell me, please help me. He said, why don't, why don't you talk about ecology? <laughs> yeah, the problem we have with the environment, the fact we are losing a lot of species, we don't have to pollute. Yeah. We need to, to take care of the fact that we are eating too, too much meat. And I said, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And this is, this is a win. And I said, we, we have hope. And this is what I like to do with any other people. You know, and if you take the time to explain things, mm -hmm. But you have to do it in an efficient, effective, <laughs> and pleasurable way. Because if you're not fast, you're going to lose them. <laughs> you have three to six seconds. Yeah. If you learn this lesson, you can persuade and influence people. But you need to become a good thinker first and mm -hmm. a good communicator 
after. Otherwise, how can you do that? This is somehow my mission, my will of uh, being present in the moment and providing value, everything that I do. This is my challenge. Even now, even today, uh, even you know, preparing for this podcast, and this is make me, this is make me happy. I feel alive, and I feel um, that I am, you know, pursuing my my goal, and I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, a beautiful goal. It's a beautiful mission, and a meaningful one. You know, it's like. Why? Do, do you have a different one? Do, don't you have the same? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really. <laughs> Thought, you know formalized it in a way uh, but it's close to it really uh, uh, yes yeah, you, I agree with with a lot of things and I, I think we <clears throat> there was a point behind you know uh, this point about control is And, and all you said now is uh, is related to it. You, you know, it's like if you you want make others to think, and you want them to make think to to think about things, uh, you know, in a proper way. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot about critical thinking around those topic, and there's a lot about learning about your biases and how you can overcome them like you you cannot remove them yes but you can be more aware of them yes. and then find the ways you can you know correct yourself correct yourself when you see the the you know the evidence of one of your bias being there Th that's another big topic and that's why uh, during the years I started to collect uh, uh, my interest around uh, the, the magnets of system thinking, critical thinking, design thinking. And mm. they seem to be always together to me. Mm. They're not separate. But this makes thinking and acting and designing heavier, not lighter. <laughs> True. It's, it's even more difficult. Yeah. If yeah. every step of the way you need to be sure There are no biases and you are mitigating them. That you are inclusive with all the stakeholders and you are taking rational and structured approaches to get the best outcome out of it. That's really a challenge. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's, I mean, this should be the aim for mm -hmm. every human being, not for designers. Yeah. So, And this is about, you know, the metacognition is thinking about thinking. Do you ever think about thinking? When I do that, my mind <laughs> blows up. Because, I, <laughs> because if you want to analyze how you were thinking, how you should think, that, that's, that's, you know, you start to go meta and it's even harder. And then you discover that when you do things like that, you, you become, you take a distance between, you know, between you And the other people who are not used to that. I'm not. I don't want to say I'm superior in any way. I don't want to. I don't want to mean that. Mm -hmm. uh, I went through, you know, a path, a journey in which I, I tend to be aware of this. So, I know when I have in front of me people who are not aware of this, and they are, you know, prey of any possible trap and and pitfall. And there, that's the point when you can make a difference because you need to be patient. Mm -hmm. You need to. You need to facilitate a better thinking process longer harder can you afford that <laughs> yeah yeah. You, you, well, yeah that's so much it's... <laughs> i told you this is six months it's not, it's not yeah it's a sim it's six month talk it's not a, a, a one hour you, one you can make a series yes we can make a of course we can make it Yeah. This okay. way, it, we can. Okay, let's say we do it every week. <laughs> oh, yeah. No problem. I'm very cheap with friends. I'm gonna make a good price. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe to maybe to conclude because we 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 said we were we took uh, we take one hour and it's yeah. already we are on time on time. 
Uh, maybe to conclude on on one point, and and I, I want you to to conclude on, conclude on that. But don't yeah. you think that's it's a, a question? It's a it's not not a cool question. I, I don't think it's a cool question because you have to. <laughs> uh, but don't you think that bad thinking in design is 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 a bit too present today in general? Because sometimes, to be honest, sometimes I, I feel like it's it's hard to to talk about this in design and 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 and, and thinking meta, as you said, uh, is like uh, we are too philosophical, too on the theories and not too not enough in the practice, and 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 I don't know where is really the limit between the two, and I don't want to create one, but. Most of the time, it feels like people want to create those limits. Like, design is practical before anything else. That's Maybe a, it's totally wrong. Maybe I'm totally wrong. No, no, that's a good limit. question. That's a good question. I have to say that um, I am I'm coming to design from an engineering background, but actually, I always been doing design in the sense of understanding deeply the user needs and building something by optimizing resources in terms of actually delivering value by keeping an eye to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. This is what is designed to be. I mean, this is what I want design to be. And uh, as I was saying in our other previous call, if you look at people like Bruno Munari, the Italian guy who was in the 50s, the 60s said, uh, uh, basically the same things that design thinkers are saying today, so not in new. Mm -hmm. uh, a designer is a frame of mind, is a way of being. So when you talk about creating cool UI like the dribble.com things, that is, that could be the bad thinking. And that could be the bad education for a designer because you look at the cool visuals without thinking about the process. You don't know what's the context behind it. That's why I like uh, a definition of design of the design that I do. That is interaction design. I design interactions. So before creating the artifacts, the tangible thing you interact with, I need to understand the entities, the actors, and the relationships. And we need to create a, a better system to suit you, that they will suit you. Then we think about communication design, visual design, UI design, and also the development. But I always part of all of the faces, even talking with the client or making a strategy, but after 20 years. But this is the place of a designer. This is where a designer should be, sitting near the entrepreneur or the project manager or the project leader or, or the project, uh, you know, um, a developer. Mm. That's the point where a designer should be. And uh, if you think that designers are just there to receive your specs so they can execute, this is not designed to me, not at all, not, not anymore. So I don't know because they could do a fantastic work. Of course. But maybe that is the place where you could do bad thinking in design. Or that's another way to look at it. You are in the right place. You have access to users. You can gather the needs. You are conscious about the ecosystem, but you're not applying anything that is rational and you are full of biases. Mm -hmm. I wasn't saying they were you thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so every place can be a place for bad thinking, but there are certain configurations which are more strategic and maybe ideal for good design. Some others maybe are more prone to bad thinking in design. Am I in any way answering? Yes, totally. Well, okay. I, I think I'm I put a, I, 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 yes, and then, then, and then that bias in my, in my question because I use the value statement like bad thinking, which is you know a big shortcut because I, I don't mean it's necessarily bad thinking, but and, and bad compared to what, and then you have to answer all those. Yeah, I'll, I didn't <laughs> want to say that, but was that, that was the first question? But this is yeah. meta because. Yeah. Uh, You can do that design, for instance, when you do user research, design research or, or interviews, 
if you are not able to extract the knowledge in the right way, mm -hmm. you are not establishing a loop of verifying and assessing the knowledge and the assumptions. Mm -hmm. And there, you need to be confident of making mistakes. Not everybody is able to say, well, I was wrong. Let, let's iterate and refine it. This okay. is not really well seen. You're supposed to say, I have the answers and I'm right. You're not supposed to say, I'm a senior strategic designer. Yesterday, I was wrong. Let's redo this thing. I mean, you need to have got to do that. But yeah. I do that every day. This is my job to be wrong. Yes. And to prove you why I was wrong, because this is value delivered to the company. I mean, but you need to be in the action for space, in the space for action, sorry. That's, <laughs> that's what you need. Otherwise, if you don't have the trust, we said that, they can see, okay, this, is, <laughs> this person is full of shit. <laughs> they don't know their job. And that, that's a risk, but I mean, this is what you're supposed to do if you want to really get mm -hmm. into... Uh, good design we want to call it like that that's my view mm -hmm. that's a good ethic ethic in fact cool well thanks thanks a lot for this discussion we i think we covered a lot in yeah. one hour it's like it's a, it's really a lot that and was a can take each each of the of the the points and and talk about it again for hours so uh well i, I hope we will do this exercise that one <laughs> one time you know? yeah absolutely we can even go deeper in a specific uh, subtopic or we can yeah. go as we are doing and um, I really would like uh, to extract some highlights and insights I want to write about it so we can have a conversation ongoing mm -hmm. and we can invite other people to join us yes okay yes like well with, with pleasure with uh, pleasure and and to have more people to think it's You know, <laughs> it can be only yeah. a good way to explore. I agree. Well, thank you very much, Kevin, for your invitation. It's been a pleasure, and I'm really looking forward to do more of this. Yeah, thank you. Me too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.